What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another example, another similar example to the previous two videos where we have to take this pattern here, we have to find an expression for the number of shaded squares in the nth diagram. So when I'm doing this question, I'm assuming that you've watched the previous two videos. Hopefully you're following along in order on the website. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the website. There's going to be a link in the description box. And before this example, there's two other ones that are similar to this. And the process that I go through in those two videos, I'm going to be going through in this one as well. This one's going to be a little bit different than those because notice here, we're actually dealing with rectangles versus before we were dealing with squares. And when I say there's the squares here, we're still finding the number of shaded squares. I'm talking about the total shape. The total shape, it's not squares. Notice it's rectangles here. It's like a three by one. Here it's a four by two. Here it's a three by five, et cetera, et cetera. Before the lengths and the widths were the same. We were dealing with squares. Here we're dealing with rectangles. So it's gonna be a little bit different, a little bit more complex but I'm going to be following the same process that I went uh, over in the previous example. So make sure you watch those before watching this one. So as I did in those examples, what we want to do is we want to create some columns here in order to relate the diagram number. So notice here, this is the first diagram. So n is 1, here n is 2, here n is 3 et cetera, et cetera. So what we got to do is we got to relate the number of shaded squares to the diagram number. So notice here the number of shaded squares is one. Here it is five, right? Yes. Here it is 11. So one, five, 11. It's a little tough to relate to directly get that as I mentioned in the previous example. So what you want to do is you want to create a couple of different columns here for different characteristics of these diagrams. So because we're dealing with rectangles here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a width column. And the width column is going to be this vertical here. So notice here the width is just one. Over here the width is one, two. Right? How many sides of a square are there? Over here, the width is going to be one, two, and three. So this width, it's going to represent this vertical portion. And then I'm going to have a length, which is going to be this portion, the horizontal portion. So notice here, what's the length going to be? One, two, three. So it's going to be three. Here, the length is going to be one, two, three, four. So here, the length is going to be four. Here, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Right, so this column is going to represent that portion. And then we're going to have a total column. Now, this total represents, it's like the area or the number of squares. And it's actually just going to be this times this. So here, notice there's one, two, three total squares. And that's the same as one times three. Over here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, same as two times four. Right? Over here, there's going to be 15, which is the same as 3 times 5. So this total, it's just going to be the width times the length. Before we were dealing with squares, it was just the length squared because the length and the width were the same. So it was like length times length, which gives you length squared. That was the area, but because we're dealing with rectangles here, this and this are going to be different. Right, So we're going to be multiplying those two values to get the total. So we're going to have the total number of squares. And then what we want to do is we want to count the unshaded number of squares. And then we're going to count the shaded number of squares. This is ultimately what we want over here, an expression for that ending column. And we're going to take these steps in order to get that. Now, remember, these three columns, these last three columns, the way they relate, you could take the total number of squares, subtract the unshaded number of squares in order to get the number of shaded squares. So what we're going to do is we're going to find an expression for this, for the nth diagram, and then for this, then we could just subtract them. 
to get the shaded number of squares right here. So let's go through these. Let's fill this table out. So starting with this first diagram, what's the width? The width is just one. What's the length? It's three. So the total number of squares is three times one, or you could just directly count it. It's going to be three like that. The total number of unshaded squares, notice it's just these two here. So the total number of shaded squares is going to be three minus two, which is one. You could check that right here. There's just one shaded square. So that's the rule for the first diagram. What about the second diagram? Um, what's the width going to be? It's going to be two. The length, four. The total, four times two, which is eight, or you could directly count eight total squares. The number of unshaded squares is going to be one, two, and three. Um, right? Yes. And then the total number of shaded squares is going to be eight minus three, which gives us five. And then you could directly um, check this one, two, three, four, five shaded squares for the second diagram. Then the third diagram, what's the width? Three. What's the length? Five. What's the total? Three times five, 15. The number of unshaded squares, one, two, three, four. 15 minus four gives us 11. And again, you could check that. Five, five, which is 10, plus the one right there would give us that, 11. Okay, so that is the filled out table with all the different characteristics for these diagrams. So let me actually erase these just to not put too much on the board here and not confuse you. So now what we need to do is we need to generalize this. So instead of having these values, what we're going to be doing is working with the nth diagram. So over here, we're going to put a value of n. And so now what you want to do is you want to go through these columns here and see what the patterns are. So how does, for example, this width column relate to the diagram number column? Well, notice they're actually just the same, right? It seems like the width is the same as the diagram number. Here there's a width of one for the first diagram. Here there's a width of two for the second diagram. Here there's a width of three for the third diagram. So for the nth diagram, the width is just going to be n, like that. Now the length, it's going to be a little bit more complex, but it's actually not too bad. Notice it's going up by twos, right? So it's actually going to be a linear relation. And what we're doing the way that the length relates to this, remember you want to always relate um, each of these columns to this column because we're making this in terms of n, right? The diagram number is n. That's the independent variable. So each of these columns you want to relate to this one. So notice how does the length, the 3, relate to the 1? How does the 4 relate to the 2? How does the 5 relate to the 3? Well, it's, we're just adding 2, right? 1 plus 2 gives us 3. 2 plus 2 gives us 4. 3 plus 2 gives us 5. So for the nth diagram, we're just going to have n plus two, right there, right? So for the fourth diagram, the width is gonna be four. It's gonna be four vertically, and then there's gonna be six horizontally. The length is gonna be six. We're just gonna add um, right? Yes, it's gonna be six. Right? For the fourth diagram, it's gonna be four plus two. It's gonna have a length of six. Sorry, I just kind of froze up there. All right, so we have the width, we have the length. And again, we needed to add these columns in this case because we're dealing with rectangles and not just squares. So before we just had a length column because the length and the width were the same. Here we have a width and length column. But what's nice is now that we have those, we know that the total is just multiplying these, right? One times three is three. Two times four is eight. Three times five gives us 15. So for n, for the nth diagram, it's going to be the width times the length. So it's going to be n times n plus 2. Now let's move on to this unshaded column here. So notice that this pattern, it's fairly easy, right? It's just 2, 3, 4. So it's just going up by 1s. So it's like a linear pattern as well. 
as a constant difference, but it's starting at two over here. So how does this over here relate to this over here? Well, notice that we're just, how does the two relate to the one? How does the three relate to the two? How does the four relate to the three? Well, we're just adding one to these over here. That's gonna give us the number of unshaded squares. So for example here, notice that there's two unshaded squares for the first diagram. So it's like one for the first diagram plus one gives us two. For the second diagram, two plus one gives us these three unshaded squares. The third diagram, it's like three plus one, four unshaded squares. So for the nth diagram, right, plus one, plus one, plus one, and then it's gonna be n plus one right there. So that's going to be the expression for the number of unshaded squares for the um, related to the diagram number. One thing I want to mention that I just saw is this. There was actually a tiny mistake with the diagrams because Notice here what's happening is the bottom row, it's unshaded except for this one in the corner and it's in the bottom left corner. So the shaded portion here, it actually should have been right here. It doesn't change the numbers. The numbers are still gonna be the same. So the pattern still remains the same over here. It doesn't change anything we've done so far. It's just visually the pattern should be instead of this being shaded in, this being shaded in right there. So that was my bad, right? If we kind of follow this, it's always that that's shaded in. Here, it's always the bottom row. And over here, there's only one row, but still this should have been shaded in. But it doesn't change this row here. The number of shaded squares is still this one. The number of unshaded is two. But uh, yeah, I just noticed that, right? So this here is the portion that should be shaded if we are visually following the same pattern. Okay, so uh, we're pretty much done here because the now the shaded portion, we know it's the total minus this. So it's gonna be n times n plus two minus this value and it's gotta be in brackets like that because you're subtracting that whole thing right there. Right. As I mentioned in the previous examples, if this is a multi, uh, if there's multiple expressions here for this, you got to put that in brackets to get that. And so that, it's not simplified yet, but that's the expression for the number of shaded squares in the nth diagram. All right, so we went through all the characteristics, they all added or they all grew on top of each other in order to get that right there. Okay, now we gotta simplify that. So let me just, I'm gonna keep that last column so we could check our answer. Um, so we know S, which is the number of shaded squares, that's what I'm letting the variable be, is gonna be N times N plus two minus N plus one, like that. And now we just have to simplify this, so distribute. There's a minus one here, distribute like that. These are like terms, so we end up with n squared plus n minus one. That right there ends up being the number of shaded squares for the nth diagram. And before finishing off, let's check our answer. So we had n, the diagram number one, two, three, so what happens if we plug in one over here? One to the power two is one, plus one gives us two, minus one does indeed give us one. What if we plug in two? Two to the power two, four, plus two, six, minus one gives us five. Three to the power two, nine, plus three is 12, minus one does indeed give us 11. So we could be pretty confident with all of our work that this is the correct value. And notice how trying to directly get this um, would be fairly tough to go from just this column to this column. 
would be fairly tough. It would take you quite a while to try different things and do trial and error. You might get lucky and, um, and get it, but I don't recommend going down that route. It's not the, um, the most reliable route. I recommend breaking it down into those other columns where you could get the characteristics or get a pattern for the characteristics more easily, relating that end to the length, the width, and then the areas, just those multiplied, then the unshaded squares, and then combining everything in order to get that. All right, so that ends up being the final answer.